This video is your complete guide to all the rules in gnoming around. In this video, we'll talk about the basic way to play, the advanced rules, go over how to score, and give you a bunch of examples. So sit back, toss your rulebook aside, and enjoy the video. Just like in miniature golf, you and your fellow gnomes are doing your best to recreate the game by earning the lowest score. Over the course of three rounds, you'll be collecting and arranging cards into a 3x3 grid. Drive your score as low as possible by placing negative value cards in your grid, or by creating rows or columns of three identical positive value cards, which will earn you negative points equal to the matching value of the set. For example, a row of three sixes would earn you negative six points. As soon as one player has no more face down cards in their grid, each other player takes one final turn and the round is over. After three rounds, total your scores and find out which gnome has won the game. There are 110 cards in the game, including 82 positive cards. These are 13 each of 8s and 7s, and 14 each of 6s, 5s, 4s, and 3s. There are 22 negative cards, with 6 negative 1s, 8 negative 2s, 5 negative 3s, and 3 negative 4s. Lastly, there are 6 special cards, 3 hazards, and 3 mulligans. Shuffle the deck and deal 9 cards face down to each player. Place the remainder of the deck in the middle of the table and flip over two cards, placing them side by side next to the deck to form two discard piles. Each player should arrange their nine cards, still face down, in a 3x3 three three grid and then choose any two cards to flip face up. Play begins with the player who is the nearest to the age of four. Each turn you will take each of the following actions in order. Draw. Choose to either draw a card from the deck or take the top card from one of the two discard piles. Play. If the card you drew is one you'd like to keep, place it in your grid by replacing either a face up or face down card. Discard. Place either the card you drew or the card you replaced on top of one of the two discard piles. Unless it is a hazard, these are simply removed from play. Here's a quick note. If one of the two discard piles are empty at the end of your turn, you must discard it into that pile if you are able only discarding a hazard would prevent you from doing so. There are four types of cards you will encounter throughout the course of Stottingham Shire. Positive cards are numbered 3 through 8 and comprise most of the deck. They are scored at face value, earning the player positive points unless they are arranged in a row or column of three identical values, in the which the player earns negative points equal to the matching value. A single card of the same value may be used to complete both a row or a column. Here is an example of scoring positive cards. A row of three fives is worth negative five total, not negative five each. Negative cards are numbered negative one through negative four and are scored at face value. There is no advantage to matching negative cards in a row or column, so it's best to position them in their grid where they won't interfere with any sets of positive cards you might be collecting. Hazard cards are never a good thing for the player who exposes or draws one, but they can be a benefit to others. If a player discards a hazard on their turn, the other players get to flip over one card in their grid so long as it is not their last face down card as this would end the round. If the player ends the round with a hazard still in their grid, they will receive a penalty of plus 10 points. Hazards are never added to the discard piles. Instead, simply remove them from play. You can place them on the opposite side of the draw pile until the next round. You may not draw from this pile. Mulligan cards have no value by themselves. Instead, their value can become any positive value needed to complete a set of three positive cards in a row, column, or both. The value the card represents can be different in the row and the column. A player may only have one mulligan in their grid. If at the end of your turn you have more than one mulligan, either drawn or revealed, you must discard it. When choosing to replace a face-down card in your grid, first reveal the face-down card. If the revealed card is a positive value that matches the card you are replacing it with, or at least one card already in your grid, you may use it to replace another card in your grid instead of discarding it. If the next card you replace is face down, you may repeat this process so long as it is another matching card of a positive value. There is no limit to the number of cards you can bounce in a single turn. The end of the round is triggered when a player replaces the last face down card in their grid. Each other player is then given one final turn. Next, any remaining face down cards must be flipped face up. Revealed cards may not be rearranged or replaced, including extra mulligans. You have to play the ball where it lies. 
Remember to not forget to put any hazards back into the deck before shuffling for the next round. Scores are tallied at the end of each round. Negative cards and positive cards not in matching sets earn players points equal to their face value. For example, a negative 2 scores negative 2 points, and a 7 card not in a set scores 7 points. A hazard carries the value of positive 10, and a mulligan not used to complete a row is valued at 0. Matching sets of 3 positive cards that appear in the same row or column earn the player negative points equal to the matching face value. For example, a set of 3 6 cards would score negative 6 points. If the player who went out first also has the lowest score, they are awarded a negative 5 point bonus. However, if they are tied or have a higher score than another player, they receive a positive 5 point punishment instead. When playing with those ages 9 and under, it's recommended that you omit the penalty. The player seated to the left of the previous dealer becomes the dealer for the next round. The player with the lowest score wins. If there is a tie, the player with the lowest score in the final round is the winner. If there is still a tie, share the victory. Here is an example of how to score. This player was able to use a mulligan to complete both a row of 5s and a column of 7s, earning her negative 5 points and negative 7 points respectively. Her negative 4 card earns her negative 4 points. The total of her negative points is negative 16. Neither the 4 nor the 7 in her middle column are part of a matching set. The sum of their face values gives her positive 11 points. The hazard that she flipped over at the end of the round penalized her with an additional plus 10 points. The total of her positive points is positive 21. Negative 16 added to positive 21 gives this player a score of positive 5 points for the round. Once you've mastered the basics and know your way around Stottingham Shire, we recommend that you modify the following rules to increase strategy, skill, and satisfaction. Bouncing. In addition to being able to bounce face down cards when you replace them in your grid, you may also bounce face up cards. As before, the cards you are bouncing must match a positive card already in your grid, and you may bounce as many cards on your turn as you are able. Runs. In addition to earning a negative score for completing sets of three identical cards, you also earn negative points for a run of three consecutive positive cards of ascending or descending value. For example, a 3, 4, and a 5, or an 8, 7, and a 6. The points earned for completing a run is the negative value of the number in the center of the run. For example, a run of 7, 6, and 5 would be worth negative 6 points as 6 is the middle number. Hazards. When you discard a hazard, only opponents with 4 or more face down cards in their grid are allowed to reveal a card. Thus, only those who are behind receive help. Mulligans. For added complexity and strategy, mulligans now only represent one value instead of two. They can still be used to complete either a set or a run in both a row and column they are a part of, but the positive value they represent must be the same in both. Here are some examples of how a turn works using the basic rules. Player 1. At the start of Player 1's turn, a 7 and a negative 2 are on top of the discard piles. Instead of drawing or picking up the negative 2, Player 1 picks up the 7 to complete the row of 7s on the bottom of her grid. She flips over the card the 7 will replace and reveals a 4. As she already has a 4 in her grid, she is able to keep the one she just reveals. She flips the face down card next to the 4 in the top row before replacing it. The card she flipped is a negative 1, which she must discard as negative cards cannot be bounced. As the 7 was the only card in the discard pile that she drew from, she must discard the negative 1 into that pile, leaving the negative 2 exposed. Next, player 2 has the option of drawing a card from the deck or picking up the negative 1 or negative 2 card. He picks up the negative 2, revealing the 5 beneath it, to place it beside his 6 on the bottom row, where it won't get in the way of the sets he's working on. He flips the card he's going to replace, it's an 8, which he can't bounce, so he discards it on top of the negative 1 to prevent the next player from being able to gain a negative card. Then player 3 can choose to pick up either the 8, the 5, or to draw a card. As neither the 8 or 5 are useful to her, she opts to draw a card from the deck instead. She draws and flips the card, revealing a mulligan. As she already has one in her grid, she must discard it. She does so, placing it on top of the 5 in the discard pile. Player 4 is happy to see the mulligan that player 3 had to discard, and snatches it up to place in the center of her grid to help towards completing a column of 8s and a row of 5s. She flips the middle card in her grid before replacing it, revealing the hazard. 
as the other three players all have more than one card face up in their grid, they each get to flip one card of their choice face up. She then removes the hazard from play. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And if you want to check out another video, check these out right here. Thanks, guys.